So here we go, installment number two. This is continuing our discussion of tracking the snowpack history as far as layers are concerned. And what I want to do in this presentation is just give you an idea of why and how these things are set up. So we have these bars and represent to give a picture of the different layers of concern in the snowpack and some basic information about what's happening as far as new snow and settlement and the like. The way this thing works, you don't have to know it in detail, but a little bit about it will help a ton. And to, in order to understand that, I'm going to go from my daily page here on November 25th over to this thing that's called the Concern Sheet. This is new in 2018, and I'll click on that. And what you see when I get to the, control, to the Concern Sheet is I have this thing called the Open Concern Table. So... Everything is being driven from this. Before I go too detailed on here, there's actually three, four tables in this in this spreadsheet, in this concern tab. And the main one is this guy here called the con current concern table. Uh, poorly named, but that's just hindsight. When you're designing these things, you don't always get things labeled right. But naturally, I'm referring to it in the documentation, in the coding, so... I can't really change the name right now or it'll actually get more confusing, believe it or not. And what you see is every layer gets an index number. NDX stands for index. And I just went through and like, what parts about a layer are important? Well, when did we notice it? Uh, are we still looking at it or did we quit looking at it on a certain date? Left an extra column in here because inevitably someone will think of something else we ought to know about it, about it that's that important. Uh, what's its name? Sometimes we give these things names. How deep is it? This is from the ground up. Uh, Alaska guys probably will be a little bummed about that, but that's just how it is here in the shallow snowpack. What's the weak layer type? So persistent weak layer test layers in this case. Elevation and aspect. This is all pretty self-explanatory. But this table drives a lot of what we're talking about. But what you'll notice here is that there's one, two, three, four open index numbers or four open layers. In other words, layers that we're interested in. And what the spreadsheet does is it compiles those into this little table here. Right now they're sorted from oldest to newest. Maybe we'll flip it over and sort from newest to oldest. That's probably going to be what happens. But right now that hasn't been put together. This concern table, these numbers here, when I come over to my sheet, you'll notice up here in, oop, yeah, up here in this table, any concern given the status open gets referenced into this front table. Basically what it's doing is it's saying, okay, from this big wad of confusion, I want to worry about these four layers, and so these four layers are what we're going to have up here. Coming back to the concern sheet, these four layers get placed into a little file line down here that says, okay, 100, 103, 105, 108. These are the three layers or four layers I want to track here. On the 23rd, I'm only tracking three of these layers. This is just strictly for the the uh, the sheet over here where where the where the actual graphs are. So if you notice here, there's only three layers on the 23rd, where we go back two days, and the next two days are tracking four layers. This just gives you a historical perspective, 72 hours of what you've been looking at. Anyhow, those are referenced from the concern page from this little table up here in the upper left corner. You don't need to know how to edit this. Just know that it exists is all I'm pointing out. Uh, and then as we go throughout each of the days that we're talking about things, we'll keep updating the layers of concern that we were talking about. And I'll show you how to edit those in a little bit. Now, uh, the final thing that is worth knowing about, not that it's that important, if I scroll back out, here's once again the table that has the meat of what we're talking about, the little subset table that lets our daily page figure out what to talk about. And then this table, which tells the daily page what to graph. At the end of the day, when you hit publish PDF, what happens is the software consumes an entire line 
that's related to that date and it will put it out here somewhere in one of these days wherever it needs to go so it actually saves everything you write because that way if you change a layer in this table it's going to change it and you won't know what the history was except that there's a history table i don't know if we'll ever use it but if we need it it's out there so anyhow that's it in a nutshell how this thing is driven and what we'll do next is talk about how to edit the various parameters and i bet when we get to that part you'll actually start to wrap your mind around this better so thanks a lot and we'll talk to you later